The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike and Lucky Strike alone offers you important evidence gathered in the tobacco country by the world-famous Crosley Pole. This evidence reveals the smoking preference of auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen, the men who really know tobacco. Here's what the Crosley Pole found. For their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice over any other brand. These experts know their business. Their overwhelming preference for Lucky Strike, we believe, has a direct relationship to the quality tobacco we purchase for Lucky's and to the real, deep-down smoking enjoyment you may expect from fine tobacco. And when these veteran tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice, for their own personal smoking enjoyment, then you know. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. So smoke the smoke tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike. Remember, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice over any other brand. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, let's go out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills where we find... Hmm, must be something wrong here. Where we find Jack down on his knees scrubbing the kitchen floor. <laughs> I didn't know a floor could get this dirty. Well, anyway, the floor scrubbed. What a job. Now, let's see, what else is on that list of things I have to do? Oh, yes, I've already dusted the bedrooms, turned the mattresses, changed the linen on the beds, did the dishes, washed the... Hello? Hello, Mr. Berry, this is Rochester. I just finished 18 holes of golf. <laughs> oh, you did, eh? Yeah. Did you wash the living room windows? Yes, yes. Did you put out the garbage? It's out, it's out. Did you scrub the kitchen floor? I just did that. Good. Uh, when will dinner be ready? <laughs> Seven o'clock, and it's the last time I'll play gin rummy with you. <laughs> Goodbye. One game of gin rummy, and I have to do all the housework. I got to do it tomorrow, too. He blitzed me. <laughs> Gosh, am I tired. Scrubbing that floor was quite a job. When I take my bubble bath tonight, I mustn't forget to put some jergens on my knees. <laughs> Now, before I take off this apron and dust cap, I better... No, there's the door buzzer. Oh, I beg your pardon, miss, but I guess I have the wrong... Dennis, it's me! <laughs> oh, yes. Gee, you look cute in that apron. I'm not trying to look cute. I was down scrubbing the floor, and it wasn't easy. I'll pull up my pants leg and show you. There, look at my knees. <whistles> now, cut that out! They come in. All right, but there's a package addressed to you lying out on the walk. There is? Why don't they deliver those things to the door? I'll go out and get it. <whistles> Dennis! It wasn't me. It was that man across the street. <laughs> what? You forgot to roll down your pants leg. <laughs> oh, yes. Hmm, they are kind of nice, aren't they? <laughs> If I can get a little more tan, I can go without stocking. <laughs> oh, well. A pretty girl is like a melody. Bum, 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 bum. Here, kid, hold the package while I get my glasses. Dennis, what are you doing? I opened the package. Gee, look at the picture script from Warner Brothers. Well, thank goodness. I've been waiting for it all week. And there's a letter with it from Harry Warner. A letter from Harry Warner? What does he say? He says... Dear Jack, enclose fine script and contract for your next picture as agreed upon. 
And it's the last time I'll play gin rummy with you. Hmm. What does that mean, Mr. Benny? Nothing, nothing. Now, kid, what'd you drop over for? Well, Mr. Benny, I want to ask you something very personal. Personal? What is it? But just a second while I close the door. All right, kid, what is it? Is anybody else at home? No, no, we're all alone. What is it you want to know? Wait till I close the window. <laughs> all right, Dennis, all right. What is it? Mr. Benny. Yes? Are you the walking man? <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, come here a minute. Huh? Let me feel your head. <laughs> no, the other one. <laughs> now, look, kid, I want to go over this script that Warner Brothers sent me. So excuse me a minute. Hmm, it's a Western. Good title, too. Bad Man of Bullock's Basement. <laughs> Scene one, fade in on ranch house as the moon comes up in the east, the sagebrush casts weird shadows across black buzzard gulls. Before you get too interested in that script, wouldn't you like to hear the song I prepared for the program? Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, right? Sing it. I can listen to you and read it at the same time. Okay. The horses are better down for the night when suddenly a shot is heard in the distance. <laughs> you vomit. One more shot out of you and I'll thrash you within an inch of your life. But gee, I sang as good as I could. Huh? Oh, oh, pardon me, kid. I, while you were singing, I was reading the script. Oh. It's a western, you know, and I guess I got carried away. I know. You rode me piggyback through the last half of the chorus. <laughs> I'm sorry, kid. Well, then get off. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, kid, your pockets make nice stirrups there. Anyway, this is the best story. I... Somebody came in. Rochester, is that you coming back? It ain't General MacArthur. <laughs> well, it's about time. Hey, what's that you're reading, boy? It's a script from Warner Brothers, and it looks great. Gee, if I'd have made this picture last year, I would have won the Academy Award instead of Ronald Coleman. If you'd have made it in that dust cap and apron, you'd have won it instead of Loretta Young. <laughs> Never mind. You know, boss, I wish you would win an Academy Award sometime. I've never seen an Oscar. You haven't? Well, Rochester, your wish may come true, because if I make this picture, I'm a cinch to win it. And maybe if you had someone with you in a supporting role, it might help. Well, a good supporting actor does add something. Uh, who did you have in mind, Dennis? Ronald Coleman. <laughs> Ronald in my picture? Hey, that's a pretty good idea. 
I mean, now that he won the award, he certainly is worthy of the opportunity. <laughs> you know, I may go next door and speak to Mr. Coleman about it. I wonder if he's home. Where are you, Ronnie? In the library, Benita. You know, maybe I haven't told you this before, but it's very nice being here, alone together, away from the crowd. Ronnie, stop talking to that Oscar and pay some attention to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. Ah, but you were thrilled winning it, weren't you? Well, you know, it's hard to describe exactly how it feels. There I sat in the Shrine Auditorium, one person among an audience of 6,200 people, and then they called my name. As I walked to the stage, my entire career flashed before my eyes. From the time I made my first appearance in London many years ago, as a banjo player. Well, I didn't know you ever played the banjo. Oh, yes, yes. I plunked a mean clink. <laughs> I used to be billed as the London Eddie Peabody. <laughs> and then I packed my belongings, took my banjo along, and came to America. Here I was billed as England's answer to Frank Remley. <laughs> yes, yes, those... Those were the things I kept thinking of during the Academy ceremonies. And I've no actual recollection of them presenting me with the Oscar. Well, you certainly were the most excited person on the stage. I excited? Was it noticeable? Mm, very. Especially when you went over to congratulate the other award winners. Well, what did I do? You slapped Loretta Young on the back and kissed Daryl Zanuck. <laughs> no. Yes. And you greeted everyone. You even shook hands with Jack Benny. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to. He stuck his arm through Gregory Peck's sleeve. <laughs> Anyway, darling, I wish we could have just one evening at home without mentioning Jack Benny. Oh, darling, why do you dislike him? So he means well. And he does try to be helpful. But only this morning he was walking around our yard helping our gardener. He wasn't helping. He was looking for Easter eggs. <laughs> Wearing that bunny suit, yes. <laughs> I aimed a kick and just missed his cottontail. <laughs> Why we move next door to him, I'll never know. Ah, oh, but we have such a beautiful home. Yes, but other people have beautiful homes, too. They can look out of their windows and see rolling green hills. Or the lights of the city spread out like a carpet of jewels. Or the golden sun setting on the Pacific. I look out of my window and see Jack Benny luxing his undies. <laughs> yesterday were yours. Oh. Yes. yes, well, he did them rather well. <laughs> yeah, but why doesn't he stick to the laundry business instead of going on the radio? <laughs> Surrounding himself with all those characters. Oh, darling. Mary Livingston's such a nice girl. Oh, I don't mean Mary. I'm talking about the others. Take that Phil Harris fellow. <laughs> well, the way he conducted himself at the party after the Academy Awards. Oh, I didn't see him there. Well, very few people did. As soon as he arrived, he got a bottle, went off in a corner, and just sat there. Wasn't he lonely? Lonely, but loaded. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think... Oh, Benita, look. Look out this window. Isn't that Phil Harris now? Where? He's walking towards Benny's house. Oh, this is strange. I thought he was younger than that. He's carrying a cane. No. No, no, darling. That, that's a pool cue. <laughs> but just look at the way he swaggers when he walks. I wonder if I can reach the doorbell from out here on the sidewalk. Better chalk up first. <laughs> Bossy! 
there's nobody here but a long finger. <laughs> hey, it's me, Rot. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Phil. Phil, what's the idea of walking through the streets with a pool cue? I want it. See what's engraved on the handle? Where? Right there. <laughs> This pool cue was presented to Phil Harris for outstanding achievement in furthering the art of snooker. <laughs> well, isn't that wonderful, winning a pool cue? Yeah, and if I hadn't scratched my last shot, I would have won the engraved cuspidor. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Sure it is. I already bought a doily for it. <laughs> you know, Phil, sometimes I wonder why I put up with you. Why a star of my magnitude, a man of my dignity, a person who holds such a stellar place in society should condescend to continue such a lowly association. Well, hoy, tee, toy. <laughs> hey, let me ask you something, Jackson. What have you got to be so stuck up about? Well... Show him your knees. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Phil, the point I'm trying to make is that you're content to go along day after day in the same old rut. But not me. I'm progressing. In fact, right now, I'm thinking of making a picture with Ronald Coleman. So, if you I get... in a picture with Ronald Coleman? <laughs> you better chalk up and shoot again, Dad. <laughs> what? And keep one foot on the floor. <laughs> well, I'm serious. What's so surprising about me and Ronald Coleman being in the same picture? Yeah, what's so surprising about it? After all, Mr. Benny was the star of Random Harvest. What? He has it embroidered on his underwear. <laughs> Dennis, those aren't mine. <laughs> Anyway, Phil, whether you believe it or not, I'm going over to Ronald Coleman's right now and see if... Come in! Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Hi, fellas. Hello, hello Don. Don. Say, Jack, I just dropped in for a minute. I want you to hear the number your sportsman quartet has prepared. Don, can't we do it tomorrow? i got to run next door to see Ronald Coleman. He and I are going to make a picture together. I don't think that last sentence got through the fat in my <laughs> head. <laughs> Would you mind repeating it? Not at all. I said, Ronald Coleman and I are going to make a picture. No. <laughs> I can't get over all you guys. What's so amazing about me and Coleman being in a picture together? Show him your knees. Damn it. <laughs> you stay out of it. Now, Don, I haven't got time to listen to the quartet. I'll see you tomorrow. But, Jack, this number's so novel, I, I think you ought to hear it. It's a Western. Don, I don't care if it... A Western? Say, maybe that would fit in my picture. All right, Don, let's hear the number. Go ahead. I'm an old cow hand from the Rio Grande. But my legs ain't bold and my cheeks ain't tan. I'm a cowboy who never saw a cow, never rode a steer, cause I don't know how. When the show ain't fixing to start him now, give me a yo That's wonderful. Give me a yo That fit right in my picture. Oh, Doctor. carry me not. From the lone prairie Just give me a lucky strike L-S-M-F-T M-F-T For they are the first choice All over the range great. And all the so cowboys Say they'll never change So smoke a lucky strike That's the one you like L-S-M-F-T that's the one for me. Engine tribe had big pow wow. Listen to no, the no, big no, cow. Big chief F B boom say how. Speedy rig say No, no, Don, I don't want Indians in it. I just want a western. Better, no, Don, no Indians in the picture. Just for a western. Engine tribe one. No, look at Don. Wait. Engine tribe one. 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 you take up my valuable time with a thing like that? But, Jack, Please, it was... I don't want to get mad. <laughs> well, look, I got some business to talk over with Mr. Coleman. I want to be in a good mood. That Indian stuff. I'm going over to see him right now. Now, where's my picture script? Oh, here it is. Oh, good evening, Sherwood. Oh, good evening, Mr. Benny. Is Mr. Coleman at home? Yes, come in. Uh, may I take your hat, sir? There you are. Uh, your coat? 
Thank you. Your apron? What? Oh, oh. Oh, my goodness. I forgot to take it off. Uh, will you tell Mr. Coleman that I'm here? Uh, very well. Oh, Mr. Coleman. Yes, Sherwood? Uh, forgive me, sir, but Cottontail Benny is here. <laughs> No, no. Send him away. Tell him we're not at home. Well, wait a minute, darling. Maybe Jack's just trying to be neighborly. He, he probably wants to congratulate you on winning the Academy Award. Well. Yes, show Mr. Benny in, Sherwood. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I, I think it's rather sporting of him. After all, he must have been a bit hurt when we didn't go over and congratulate him on being the walking man. You know, for eight long weeks, he just walked around in a circle. <laughs> yeah, too bad he didn't straighten it out. He'd be in Chicago by now. <laughs> Anyway, I, I still feel that this is a trick. He's, he's over here to borrow something. Oh, why do you always suspect that, Ronnie? Well, he already has my electric shaver, portable radio, phonograph, bridge lamp, cocktail shaker, electric blanket, fountain pen, tuxedo, and Wednesday night was the last straw. Why? What happened? He told me he was going to the Palladium, his girlfriend had to work, and he wanted to borrow you. <laughs> Tell me, I haven't done the shimmy in years. <laughs> now, Benita. Here he comes. Hello, Benita. Hiya, Ronnie. Long time no see. Oh. Hello, Jack. You're right, Jack. I haven't seen you since the dinner party last Saturday night. Yes. Well, that a wonderful dinner. Too bad you couldn't have been at my table. Oh, that's all right, Jack. The man we had served beautifully. <laughs> By the way, Ronnie, I didn't get a chance to talk to you Saturday night, so I just came over to congratulate you on winning the Academy Award. Thank you, Jack. Good night. Huh? <laughs> oh, well, he, he just meant it was a good night to, to have won the award. Oh, 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 oh I see. <laughs> well, Ronnie, the real reason I came over here is to offer you a part in a movie that I'm going to make for Warner Brothers. You're making a movie, and you have a part for me? That's right, and it's something you've never done before. I'm sure. <laughs> you know, it, it's a Western. It's a Western, Ronnie, and you'll play a cowboy. Me? A cowboy? Yeah, I, I brought along the script so you could read a few lines just to see how you like it. Oh, uh, look, Jack, I have no intention Ronnie, of... Ronnie, why don't you read it? It might be a grand opportunity. Oh, well, all right. Good. Now, Benita, will you do me a favor and read the feminine lead with oh, Ronnie? Oh, no, wait a minute, Jack. I mean, I don't... Uh, now, now, Benita, anything. why don't you read it? It may be a grand opportunity. <laughs> Good. Now start reading on page three where you two meet for the first time. Now go ahead, Ronnie. Remember, you're a cowboy. Shucks, ma'am, I sure am. Plum sorry I killed that hombre. I reckon I didn't reckon he was your paw. I reckon. <laughs> You sure plug poor Paul. But even though he's gone, I reckon he'll be happy to know you're apologizing for an honest mistake. Uh, I reckon. <laughs> a, a little more feeling, Benita, then. <laughs> Shucks, Missy, ma'am. I sure feel like an ornery coyote for a shooting York in folk. Uh, uh, bow your legs a little there, will you? Uh, <laughs> Sure looks strange lying there in the tumbleweed. <laughs> Cold and dead. Now, now, this is your big speech, Ronnie, so be very, very tender in this. Yeah. Wait a minute, little lady. Don't say dead. A cowboy's never dead. Just say he's traveled onwards. Up to that big corral up yonder in the sky. Where all you can hear is the harps of the angels. And the singing of the sons of the pioneers! <laughs> oh, good heavens, what was that? Me, I'm playing the part of your horse. <laughs> no, good. Is there a scene where you break your leg and I have to shoot you? I'm sorry, Jack, but this part isn't for me. Well, okay, Ronnie, I was just trying to do you a favor, you know. It's your career. But when the picture comes out and it's a big hit, remember, I offered you the part before I took it to Gabby Hayes. 
<laughs> anyway, back to your decision. I'll be running along. Good night, Ronnie. Good night, Benita. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks for uh, nice of you to think of me. Well, I always like to help. Hey, wait a minute. Ronnie, is that your Oscar on the table with the floodlights on it? <laughs> yes. Say, do you mind if I look at it? Well, uh... gosh, it's really beautiful. You know, Rochester, my butler, has never seen an Oscar. Would it be all right if I borrowed it for a little while? <laughs> well, uh... oh, all right, Jack. Go ahead and take it. Gee, thanks. Darling, why did you agree to let him take the Oscar home? It might as well be with the rest of my things. <laughs> What did you say? Oh, nothing, nothing. Oh. Well, Ronnie, it's awfully nice of you. Thanks a lot. I'll just wrap the Oscar in this copy of tonight's newspaper. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> there we are. Well, good night. Good night. Gee, it was nice of him to let me take the Oscar so I could show it to Rochester. I must have stayed there longer than I thought. So dark out. No moon. Oh, well. Hello, kitty. Hey, kitty, 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 kitty. Darn it, she got away. She'd have made a wonderful A string. Hey, Bud. Bud. Huh? Got a match? Match? Yes, I have one right here. Don't make a move. This is a stick-up. What? You heard me. Mister. Mister, put down that gun. Shut up. Now, come on. Your money or your life? <laughs> Look, bud, I said your money or your life. I'm thinking it over. <laughs> now, mister, shut up and give me your wallet, and I'll take that package you're holding, too. No, no, mister, don't take that package. It's mine. It belongs to Ronald Coleman. Shut up. But, mister, please. Hey, this looks like gold. I'll melt it down. But it isn't mine. I have to return it. Pipe down. And lay down on the sidewalk, face down, and count to a hundred. Look, mister, can't we... Go on. Don't make a move or I'll let you have it. Okay, okay. Down on your face and start counting. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Meow. Go away, kitty. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Meow. Kitty, stop licking my face. I got enough trouble. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Meow. Kitty, go away from here. Nineteen, twenty. What'll I tell Ronnie? Twenty-one. 22, 23, 24. Jack, we'll be back in just a minute, but first, here's Basil Rysdale. Independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice over any other brand. The famous Crossley poll has just completed an impartial survey in 11 southern tobacco states. This poll, taken among the tobacco experts themselves, reveals the smoking preference of the men who really know tobacco. Yes, for their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike First choice over any other brand. These are the experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. And we believe their overwhelming preference for Lucky Strike has a direct relationship to the quality tobacco we purchase for Lucky's. You've heard the poll results. Now listen to what Mr. Herbert Highsmith, independent tobacco buyer from North Carolina, recently said. Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy quality tobacco. Smooth, ripe, and mild I've smoked Lucky's 15 years. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, remember... L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 100. Help! Help! Police! Police! Will Jack Benny recover the stolen Oscar? Will Ronald Coleman sue him? Will Bing Crosby be our guest next week? Tune in and find out!
This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.